What's the most FC cat up thing you did in a sleepover? Story 1. I was in the bathroom. I could overhear whispers, so I knew they were going to play a prank on me. I thought that the prank would be that they would unexpectedly break the door open while I was in there. So, to counter surprise them, I decided to only pretend I was on the toilet and to instead hold the door shut by pushing against it with both palms, adding my weight to the door and preventing it from being pushed open. However, that was the not their intended prank. They thought I was on the toilet, far from the door. So their idea was to have a sword thrust unexpectedly through the door. The sword went through the door and then straight through the palm of my right hand as well. Blood went everywhere. The sword went in and out quickly. I have vague memories of turning the sink on and wrapping my hand with hand towels even while blood spurted throughout the room. I don't remember getting in the car, but apparently I was driven to the emergency room. It's now 20 plus years later. The rest of my hand is fine, but I have a small scar of light colored flesh on my palm where I no longer have any feeling. Usually when I mention the story, I just say that I was stabbed through by a sword when I was a teenager without going into detail on the how and why, which is significantly more stupid. The same person who did this prank on me decided to prank someone else by holding a knife right above a sleeping person's eye so that when they woke up the first thing they'd see is a knife blade close up. Thankfully, that particular incident resulted in only a scream with no physical injuries. Looking back, I suspect he may have been an unhealthy friend to hang out with. Story 2 I was away with a friend's family, and I was on the phone pretending to the other guys I met this hot babe at the pool, and we were gonna sneak out and meet up that night. I also went on to complain about the family who paid for my trip. They heard everything. I cringe to this day when I think about it, like second, third hand embarrassed of myself. To be fair, they turned out not to be very nice people, but they were obviously nice to me. Story 3 Watched hardcore porn with her probably stoned older brother. We were all like 12, and I think her younger brother was also there. He should not have been left in charge. Story 4 In the mid-late 90 seconds, my brother got really into the anarchists' cookbook and learned how to tap into neighbors' landlines from a box on the pole using a touch-tone phone and some connectors from Radio Shack. We'd have friends sleep over we are close in age, and we'd sneak out, and he'd hook a phone up so we could call phone sex lines from outside a neighbor's house in the bushes. I still wonder if they disputed the charges, or if the wife just thought the husband was calling 1900 Big Tits at 2 a.m. Story 5 Visiting a friend's house for the first time, and I couldn't find the bathroom I was about 10 during a sleepover. In the middle of the night, dark, confused, I pissed in the closet. Story 6 Had a bloody nose. It was dark and I didn't know the house, so I stuck near the walls and went down the hallway and found the bathroom. Had the bleeding to stop, cleaned up, went back to sleep. In the morning, the mom came in frantic making sure everyone was alive after she saw smeared, bloody handprints all the way down the hallway. Story 7 a friend and I were 11 or 12. His sister was about 14. She announced that she'd never seen a dick in person before and wanted to. Basically, it was a show me yours and I'll show you mine thing. Except it was directed at me and my friend. Which makes sense, I guess. If she'd never seen one before, why not try to look at two at once? Brown rules were set. You can look for as long as you want or as close as you want but no touching. I'd never seen a vag in person before so I was up for it. My friend was apparently curious enough to scope out his own GD sister. So, we all showed each other our junk. After it was over, we never did that again. Never spoke of it again or anything else. Story 8 Raided my friend's dad's Playboy Max. And my friend showed me a porn video. And I couldn't figure out why the girl was drinking the guy's pee. Full disclosure, I was like 9 or 10. And this was early 80 seconds. Story 9. More embarrassing than fucked up. Accidentally clogged the toilet at friend X's house. There was no plunger, and the toilet was filling rapidly. I panicked and ran to my friend who promptly called for his dad. His dad takes one look and yells from the bathroom, Jesus, X, how big of a shit did you take? It took years before I went back to his house. Story 10. I clogged the toilet at a friend's house in the middle of the night. It started to overflow 
and there was no plunger. I woke up my friend, who then woke his parents. Turned out that the water that had overflowed had soaked through the floor and was dripping into the kitchen. His mom started trying to collect the dripping water downstairs while his dad was on clawed duty. I never saw a plunger that night. What I did see was my friend's dad elbow deep in shit water pulling out a wad of shit and toilet paper. The floor was covered. We had to get that cleaned up. More shit water. At this time, his sister was awake and came to investigate. I haven't talked to them in over 20 years. Story 11. In Boy Scouts, I was the morning cook, meaning I woke up before anyone else to chop wood, make fire, and get water boiling. I grabbed the hatchet and start splitting a log into little splinters for kindling. It was cold and dewy. The hatchet slipped from my hand mid-upward swing and went flying to the tent circle. It seriously flew 10 minutes 15 yard and fell straight down though the roof of the tent where four scouts were sound asleep. I'm not sure how long I waited to hear someone start screaming. I probably sat there in terrified anticipation for over a minute. And I was worried someone might be hurt, so I crawled over to that ten where the hatchet landed. I super quietly unzipped the flap and saw it landed in a bag of clothes very close to some kid's head. I snuck in, grabbed the hatchet, left the tent, zipped it back up, and finished breakfast. I heard them at breakfast complaining that the raccoons has ruined their perfectly nice tent by clawing a hole in it. Story 12 I bathed my friend. Two of us stayed at a friend's house in our early teens. We raided their parents' liquor cabinet and proceeded to not understand how alcohol works. We drank every kind of liquor under the sun very quickly over the course of a few hours. We chased shots with popsicles and ate animal crackers to get the taste of gin out of our mouths. One of the three of us stood atop a small staircase into the living room. Maybe four steps, a few feet in distance. He swayed, grabbed onto the railing, turned pale, and then projectile vomited so violently that it all landed and splashed at the bottom of the staircase, leaving the steps clear, minus a few drops. He then immediately fell down the stairs and began to laugh in a pool of his own vomit. We picked him up, dragged him to the bathroom, stripped off all his clothes, and shoved him in the shower. He had thick curly hair, that was filled with bright red popsicle-colored animal cracker paste. I told him to put out his hands as he kept yelling to not tell everyone he had a small dick. Once he finally complied, I poured shampoo in his hands and told him to clean his hair. He slapped it all into his face, causing him to gag and his eyes to burn. At this point, I had to get him cleaned up, so I did. We had no spare clothes for him barring our friend's brother's clothes. He was quite obese. We had to get a belt and tightly tie what I can only describe as parachute shorts around his waist. We went to sleep afterwards and convinced ourselves no one in the house heard us. If the story is believed to be untrue, the reason I remember it so well is because that friend shouting about his dick had a bigger dick than me, and you never forget finding out your dick is small. Story 13 We had a co-ed church group sleepover at a Vermont farm. I was 13 and recently got a fake testicle. I had my other testicle removed due to an accident. I was getting people to feel my balls and take bets on which one was the real one. Story 14. Threw up on my cousin's Christmas tree in the middle of the night at her house. I still get shit for that edit because of typo. Story 15. I was at a sleepover. My buddy slept on his couch. I slept on his beanbag chair with a blanket. After hours of playing Seven Golden Eye, I get up and go use their restroom, except I didn't. I only dreamed I did, and I pissed all over myself at like 4 a.m. I hid the blanket in their jacket closet. It was summertime, and threw the beanbag chair and my pissy underpants in their outdoors dumpster they lived on a ranch. I was 14 at the time. But Story 16 One of my buddies in high school would bully me all the time, and he treated me like shit when I was staying over his house with other friends. One time he told me to go get him a glass of water, so I went upstairs, poured him a glass of water, dipped my nuts in it for a few seconds, then gave it to him. Story 17 I pissed on the air mattress, and my friend's mom asked if a raccoon broke in. Story 18 Locked home while everyone was asleep. Didn't tell my friend, didn't tell their parents, didn't tell my parents, just crawled out a window at my friend's house 
and crawled in a window at my own, or to bed. Not a single person looked for me in the morning. Story 19 I don't remember what we were looking for, but me and another friend went through our buddy's parents' bedroom drawers and found a VHS tape. We were curious and idiotic, so we popped the tape in to see what was on it. Our buddy walked in while we were watching his parents have sex. His screen was the most shocking, horrifying thing I have heard to this day. Story 20 I peed on my friend's couch during a sleepover. I was ten kind old to pee the bed, I know. I woke up in a panic, of course, but discovered the couch cushions weren't sewed to the couch. And they were identical on both sides. So I flipped that shit, changed into a spare pair of shorts, and went to sleep. A year later, while I was at that friend's house, his mom discovered my huge, yellow piss stain on the bottom of a couch cushion. Of course, she didn't suspect me. My friend's little sister took the heat. It was me, Mrs. Scofield. I pissed on your couch and let it soak for a year. Story 21 I had a sleepover at a friend's house. Preteen boys, so we were stuffed in one little bed. I got a nosebleed, but slept through it for about an hour. I noticed eventually and got up to tend to it. My friend woke up while I was in the bathroom to what looked like a scene from a horror movie. I did not get a second sleepover. Story 22 Played with matches. For years afterward thought I'd burned my aunt and uncle's house down. I was staying with them, my cousin and I were lighting matches in the kitchen and throwing them in the sink to put them out. The head of one flew off and landed in the shelving unit by the sink, still smoking, but when we looked for it, we couldn't find it. It was the 82nd, so all those kids don't play with matches ads were everywhere. Hours later, we were awakened by my aunt telling us to get out of the house because it was on fire. Watched their house burn to the ground, and was terrified to tell them what we'd been doing earlier. I just knew we'd done it. Carried that guilt for years. When I was around 15-ish, which was many years later, I finally told my aunt. She started laughing, and after realizing I'd been thinking this the whole time, hugged me and explained it had been wiring in the back bedroom. I was an adult before I finally understood. After learning about how fire marshals investigate fires that it wasn't just an assumption they'd made and could let go of that guilt. So I guess, technically, the most screwed up thing I did on a sleepover was traumatize myself for years. Story 23 So my house never had junk food when I was little and when I slept over my friend's house I ate an entire Chips Ahoy container while everyone was asleep and then put the container under her little sister's bed who then got blamed for it and in trouble. Story 24. It was probably in like sixth grade maybe. Buddy of mine had a birthday sleepover, had a super cool basement with pool and game cube and a mini fridge, dope parents who bought us pizza and all that. It was about like 15 of us spending the night. At some point around like 2 a.m. someone wanted to play Mario Kart and all you heard was a big crash. And suddenly a very faint I think I just spilled orange soda on the game cube. Hue a faint BZZT sound, and yeah, GameCube was fucked. But his parents were not happy, pretty sure that was the last big sleepover like that. Story 25 In high school I passed out super drunk on my back at a friend's house, and started throwing up in my sleep. Luckily my friend heard what was happening, and woke me up and rolled me over before I had a chance to asphyxiate. Story 26 was sleeping on the floor while my buddy slept on the bed. I decided to masturbate for some damn reason. I really hope he was asleep. Story 27 My friend had just gotten the internet, so we spent all night trying to look up porn of the Spice Girls. That should give you a rough idea of when this happened. Story 28 We found craft singles in the fridge and put one over the nose and mouth of a friend of ours who fell asleep on the couch before everyone else. It immediately softened and molded into a cheesy seal over his face, and he stopped breathing. We all freaked out for a solid ten seconds, very quietly, until we heard him make a chewing sound. Motherfucker smelled cheese and took immediate action despite being unable to breathe, and just straight up ate a mouth-sized hole into the single unconsciously. We then proceeded to plaster the entire package onto his face one at a time and watch him hoover up the cheese slices in order to not die. Story 29 
When I was in high school, I was at a sleepover with a couple friends in one of their basements. And we took turns with two of us in the basement bed dry humping each other, and the third coming in like a wife discovering her husband cheating. At the time, we all thought it was a hilarious role play. But now, when I look back at it, I have so many questions. Story 30 I snuck out of my good friend's house while she was sleeping. Met up with some friends who were looking for someone to teepee. We teepeed my friend's house, and then I snuck back in and went to bed. In the morning, I had to act surprised while helping her clean it up. I still feel bad. Story 31 I got my first period at a sleepover, and lucky for me the first year of periods came with wicked vomiting and diarrhea. So in the middle of the night, right after everyone fell asleep, I destroyed my friend's bathroom with a volcanic amount of diarrhea. Then, on my way back to the living room, where five preteen girls were crammed, I proceeded to vomit directly between two girls sleeping. I had to ask the mom for help with cleaning up the mess. Story 32 I was pretty young, but I shit myself while I was sleeping and hid the underwear under my homie's bed. Story 33 Watched The Exorcist when I was way too young. Scared the crap out of me, so puss it out and went downstairs and watched Piranha with his mum instead. Story 34 Made so many prank calls that we ended up calling the same house three separate times about six hours apart. Just typing in random numbers. Lady was fucking pissed. Held the cops. Story 35 Got hammered at the bar and slept over at this couple's house. I never got the tour so didn't know where the bathroom was. I woke up having to puke and shit. I alternated but I got shit and puke everywhere. They didn't have toilet paper so I used a bag of cotton balls which wouldn't flush so I put all the wet cotton balls back in the original bag with my shit covered underwear and threw the bag away in their kitchen trash can. Their dog was watching me the entire time. I left before they got up and never spoke to them again. Story 36 When I was a stupid kid I got invited for a sleepover. It was a few of us, and we would be going paintballing the next day through generosity of the host and his parents. Now I knew most of them from my school, but was really only good friends with one and he had suggested they invite me as he knows I like to paintball. In the nighttime when we were all in the living room being loud, and dumb kids. I stupidly said the host name was probably upstairs fucking his mom. Everyone bust out into laughter. Well, I said it loud enough that they heard upstairs as well. And his mom wasn't very happy. The next day it was brought up and they completely blamed the wrong person. I never said a word about how it was me. That was maybe 10 or 11 years ago. And I still think about it lol. It was so rude and unnecessary. I wish someone had ousted me but you live and you learn. Story 37. Similar event happened to me, but I was the host. My friends and I were in the basement furnished playing video games when my dad called me upstairs to finish my chores. As I was walking up the steps, one of them says, what, host, are your chores to suck dick or something? My dad heard this, and without hesitation, from the top of the steps out of view yells, no, friend, that isn't one of his chores, but thanks for asking. He literally never came back over to my house. He was so embarrassed. He waited outside around the corner before we would walk to the park to play ball and stuff from then on. Story 38 I had a wet dream while sharing a bed with my friend. He didn't wake up. I had just hit puberty and had a random wet dream. Story 39 Big sleepover for my B-Day. Some dude wanted to make a vile concoction of stuff from our kitchen to pour on the first one to fall asleep. He fell asleep fist. I poured it on him so it looked like he peed. He woke up and freaked out. I gave him spare shorts and we washed his. I still feel bad about it but he kinda had it coming. Story 40 We were all like 9 or 10 year old girls and everyone else had fallen asleep except for me so I decided I would play a prank on them. I got up and shook a good amount of black pepper into my hand and went to several of the girls and held it under their noses. What I was thinking would happen was they would wake up sneezing and be like, hey, that was silly. But instead they ended up waking up crying because they inhaled pepper. And turns out black pepper being inhaled into a sensitive orifice can really fucking sting. 
The girls cried so hard that my parents woke up and I had to explain the whole innocent idea behind my scheme. It felt so bad. Story 41 This is not the weirdest thing, but something that has always stuck out to me. Had a girl tell me that she knew someone who masturbated by holding themselves up at the top of a door and basically doing pull-ups against the door to get off. She even demonstrated it for me. Then she took a very long shower with a detachable shower head. She came out silent and out of it for a bit. It didn't occur to me until a few years later that she had the most defined arms out of anyone I knew at the time who was our age. I remember thinking that was weird since she played soccer, but her upper body was ripped. Also, no one would make that up and say it was their friend because it was so strange, and she was wet, a.e. too good at it. I tried after her thinking, sweet a new way to get off, but I could only raise my body a few times. Anyways, girl got off from the corner of her closet door by doing pull-ups. Story 42 Tried to drink straight from a bottle of Jim Beam instantly threw up all over my friend's table. Story 43 In elementary school, my friend and I would dare each other to rub random objects on our genitals. Story 44 my childhood best friend had two younger sisters, their ages each two years apart. So we were eleven, middle sister was nine, youngest sister was seven. We snuck into youngest sister's room, who was a notoriously heavy sleeper, and loosely tied a string around her wrist, then tied the other end to the ceiling fan. Turned the fan on low, so her arm was slowly helicoptering in circles while she slept. His mom made the rounds to check on all us kids a few minutes later and started cracking up when she saw. Told us to make sure we took it back down before too long, and we assured her we planned to. She went back to bed and must have told her husband, who most certainly did not find the humor in it. We both got grounded for months. Story 45 I was at a sleepover at my best friend's house in seventh grade. Her brother was two years older and really cute. All evening he asked if I'd come out with him after everybody was asleep. I said no, but of course, late that night, I felt him tugging on my foot. My friend and I were in her queen bed, and he was at the end, whispering at me to please please come talk to him. For some reason, I was finding the whole thing hilarious, and trying to laugh quietly. Dude pulls his shorts down, and shows me this massive boner. While impressive, just set me off laughing harder. Finally, his sister rises straight up like the kid in The Exorcist and screams Michael stop trying to get her to look at your boner. We exchanged a meaningful look as we heard his mother yell, got a knit, Michael, and fling her door open. It was too soon for us. I had seen my first adult penis and I needed time to process it. We did go out when I was in ninth or 10th grade, but I never saw that beast again. Editing for those that asked, Michael's cause of death was complicated and tragic, along the lines of permanent solution to a temporary problem, but it was clear, he changed his mind. Michelle died in an accident. His sister, Michelle, had been awake the whole time and had heard the conversation. These siblings were less than a year apart in age, had very similar huge, extroverted personalities. Their mom was extremely depressed over the divorce, so screaming one of both kids' names was a constant occurrence. She was often intoxicated, so I don't know if she registered boner so much as stop fucking screaming at 2 a.m. It was the early 1980s, and I loved both of those kids, and while I'd never seen a boner before, I never felt threatened or coerced in any way, and it was a one-off thing. Michael was genuinely one of the sweetest, kindest people I knew. He died in 1988, and his sister died in 1996. Story 46 Played Bomberman 64, ate pizza bites, and drank Sprite then shit my britches at my friend's grandparents' nursing home. The sleepover was cancelled. My friend Chad got permission for me, and another friend to sleep over for the night. We hung out all day, but the family had plans to go see his grandfather. We all packed into the car, and when we got to the nursing home Chad, Travis and I decided to race around the building. Halfway through, my stomach started rumbling. I squatted in the field behind the building and had the most unholy diarrhea of my life. Much to my surprise, I looked down and realized I hadn't squatted far enough away from my pants where all of my Hershey squirts had accumulated. I pulled up my pants, shit started dribbling into my shoes, 
and I walked the walk of shame past the adults at the front entrance to go to the bathroom and see if I could clean myself up. I sat on the toilet with another bout of diary, tears rolling down my face, shit still advancing down my leg, trying to get myself clean when my friend's father came to check up on me. I couldn't tell if he had the look of pity or disgust on his face. We left the nursing home after I was finished expelling the demons from my anus. Chad's parents made me sit on plastic garbage bags in the back seat and had rolled all the windows down for the ride home. Moral of the story, don't go racing on a belly full of Sprite and pizza bites. Story 47. So, I have a history of sleep talking, walking issues, and they're especially heightened when I'm stressed. I don't like being away from home, so sleepovers are a recipe for disaster for me. Lo and behold, I woke up one morning after my first sleepover to the horrifying news from my friend that I started sleepwalking. Il karate chop over and over and proceeded to ruthlessly swing my arms into my friend's stomach, effectively waking her up out of dead sleep. We were eight. This was the first time I slept over her house, and I had never told her about my sleepwalking problems. She still makes fun of me about it to this day. Story 48 We accidentally set one of our friends on fire, like Ghost Rider style. Okay, so it was the summer between 8th and ninth grade. There was like five of us camping out. We had some beers and found some sticks and kerosene. Ate some torches, but my buddies went out. He was holding the damn stick over the fire and asked another guy to pour some more fuel on his stick. It exploded and a ton of the kerosene went all over his face and immediately caught on fire. We beat him with hoodies to put the fire out. I still have very vivid images of his face basically melting in front of me. He lived and got amazing skin grafts. Really can't even tell now. Story 49 It was like 12, and we were on a trampoline flashing people driving by. We thought we were sexy shit. At 12, surprised we didn't get kidnapped by a predator. We crank called people telling them their order of like 1,000 dildos was ready, or something amazingly stupid like that. We blocked our return ID, but the one time we didn't. A guy called back a few moments later absolutely furious, telling us he hadn't ordered those and demanding who we were. We slept on that same trampoline with some pillows and blankets and had some late-night confessions, me and two other girls. They'd both been sawed already. At 12, I don't remember details, and I wouldn't tell them anyway. I hadn't, and I felt so bad for them. Wondered how the world was like that already. Also scared for myself. Pretty sure I pissed myself laughing like twice. It was truly a carefree day despite the horrendous decisions we were making with the flashing. And Crank calls LMFAO. They were good friends. I hope they're doing well. Story 50 One time I woke up jacking off in my sleep. My friends all around me on the floor passed out. I put it away and went back to sleep after looking around to make sure everyone was still sleeping. I've woken up like this about five times in my life, and I'm always really surprised to actually be in the act sleep jacking. 